Hey everyone, this is me Dhru, and in this video I will be talking about mobile photography. This video was requested by a lot of people. I'm like fine, let's make a video about mobile photography. Now I shoot a lot of my photographs on DSLR but I also shoot a lot of photographs on mobile phones. Especially the photographs that you see on my stories, Instagram stories are mostly shot on mobile phones. I also shoot some uh, photographs using mobile phones when you know there are times and there are places where uh, a DSLR is just simply not allowed so I have to like use my smartphone and thanks to the improvement in camera technology especially in these like small devices you can easily get really good high quality images out of them and if you know what you're doing then you can improve that further in this video I'll help you to understand how you can improve that also if you're expecting me to show you guys how you can shoot photographs like this no god please no no okay the first really important thing is shoot using pro mode pro mode is really really good it really helps you improve not only your mobile photography not only your final result but it will also help you understand the basics of photography and improve on that a lot of camera apps come with a pro mode built in and you can use them it helps you get a control over stuff like your shutter speed or your iso or your white balance it helps you learn and enhance your skills because stuff like exposure triangle you can easily learn if you start using pro mode it will help you get an understanding a good understanding of shutter speed and iso and how these things um, changing these things result in a different look in your final output now most camera apps actually come with pro mode but if your phone or your manufacturer the camera app does not come with a pro mode you can install third party applications that work just fine uh, some of my favorite applications are gcam and lightroom now lightroom is an editing app i know but it also has a camera built in which gives you complete flexibility and all the control that you need it helps you decide your shutter speed your iso your white balance and even your focus it also helps you shoot really good images and you can shoot images even in raw dng format talking about raw dng format that's our second tip shoot raw and understand the software processing now shooting raw is important because it gives you more data to work with and with more data you have more flexibility when it comes to editing. Yes the file size is going to be bigger but it will help you color your photographs or edit your photographs a bit differently. Uh, it will give you more dynamic range so, so suppose your sky is completely blown out you can bring some of the details back if you're shooting raw it's much easier. Also most cameras have different modes and it's easy and it's important to understand how these different modes help you get different pictures for example there's an HDR mode you should know when to use it there's the portrait mode you should know when to use that so there are different modes and it's important to you know test every single mode out and understand how it you know impacts your final image another important thing is that because now most of the smartphones come with dual or even triple lenses know where and when to use these specific lenses the wide angle lens it's great for landscape the normal lens it's still wide but it's great for your all day-to-day -day casual photo that you're taking the normal lens is great with it the telephoto lens is great for when you want to zoom in but it's also really great when you are shooting portraits because it gives a nice lens blur third a really important tip People usually don't talk about this but your mobile phones are really small as compared to your DSLRs or your mirrorless cameras so it's important to use this small size for your advantage get creative you can easily fit your mobile phones anywhere and get amazing great results phones are portable and that gives you like a ton of options like you can mount it anywhere you can fit it inside the drawer to get something to get a shot like this or for example in this top down shot I used 
my phone and I put it in one of the fan blades. And now I know this is a little, you know, not exactly safe. But it's impossible to get these shots using your DSLR. Obviously, you can use like clamps and maybe like a tripod and attach like a, uh, another pull on it and then make sure that it's completely balanced. Apply counterweight so it does not fall off, then apply a plate and then put your DSLR on it. It's a lot of work. Just simply take, take my phone and like put it there. It's easy, it's convenient because the phone is small and light. And that's something that you can easily take advantage of to improve your shots and get creative and different variety of shots. Fourth, get perfect exposure every single time. Now, dynamic range is one thing where most of the phones fall short as compared to a DSLR or mirrorless cameras because, again, your phones have a limitation when it comes to images. But with this tip, you can get perfect exposure every single time and it's amazing. For this to work, all you need to do is put your phone somewhere where it does not move, on a tripod or a fixed place. Then you take multiple exposures. You take one image where, for example, your subject is perfectly exposed. Then you take a second image where your background or your foreground elements are perfectly exposed. Then you go to your image editing software like Photoshop or Snapseed and then you stack these images together and then you'll have a perfect image and you won't have to deal with that dynamic range that is just not there when you are editing your photographs. You can get perfectly exposed shots every single time. And the fifth and last tip is sort of understanding your camera when it comes to your mobile phone and the camera inside it it's easy, it's really 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 important to understand that there are limitations to it and you will only be able to identify and know these limitations when you shoot with your mobile phone when you get creative when if you are shooting only one kind of shot and it's working but there are some times when you will have to you know shoot different kind of shots and then you will realize that it's just not working and so it's better to you know be prepared and know what your phone can do and what your phone just simply cannot do it's better to be prepared than to face the consequences later it's it's the same with uh, even my DSLRs or uh, your cinema cameras it's important to know that what your what this piece of technology can do and what it cannot do yes it suffers when it comes to dynamic range yes the details are not that good yes the image sizes and the details are not there as computer dslr so it's important to know what you're doing it will help you not only take better photographs it will help you with your editing workflow it will help you understand that how you can tweak it specifically for your device if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like and uh, yeah, share it with your photographer friends. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.